Hi, this is Carrie Brownstein. This is DJ Premier. This is Darren Aronofsky. You got the Rizzo right here. Rose McGowan. Right here. Aisha Tyler. The Tribe Called Quest. Fred Armisen. Fritz Paul. Javier Munoz. Seth Meyers. Frankie Cosmos. Flying Lotus. Hi, we're Haim, and you're listening to the Talk House Podcast. Ow! Hello, and welcome to the Talk House Podcast. I'm Josh Modell. On this week's episode, we've got a couple of old friends who've made some great music both together and separately, and who record under interesting names, Chaz Bear and Hannah Van Loon. Those aren't even the interesting names I was talking about. Chaz Bear is better known as Toro y Moi. He's a pioneer in the chill wave genre who started releasing records about a dozen years ago. But that micro genre never quite captured what Toro y Moi is all about, because nothing really can. Bear loves to jump around sonically, dipping his toes into indie rock, hip-hop, even some jazzy influences. He's got enough excess energy that Toro y Moi isn't even his only musical outfit, and he also moonlights as a graphic designer. This spring and summer, he'll open shows for Caroline Polachek, and he's also part of the new Reset Touring Festival that's hitting big cities this year. Oh, and he's still got time to collaborate with today's other guest. Now, Hannah Van Loon has been making music as Tanuki Chan since 2016 or so, and Chaz Bear has been involved in quite a bit of it. In addition to releasing it via his imprint company, Bear has produced quite a bit of Van Loon's music and collaborated with her on it, including the brand new Gizmo, which is out March 3rd. It's a slightly more uplifting experience than her lovely but kind of dark debut, 2018's Sundays. Her publicist described one song on the record, Don't Give Up, as new metal meets Cocteau Twins, which is sort of simultaneously wrong and exactly right. Check out a little bit of a different song, Take Care, right here. Van Loon and Bear are both a little bit introverted, as you'll hear, but they chat a bit about her woodworking, his studio, and TikTok. They talk a bunch about TikTok, whether it's a force for good or evil, what kinds of weird corners you can find on it, and how it's actually a really great tool for learning about new music. Enjoy. How's it going? Pretty good. I reacted to my coffee. Congrats on the new single coming out today. Thanks. How long were we sitting on this? When did we turn it into the the label? Like, oh my God, like a long time ago. Like in May or something last year? May 21? It's kind of wild. And then we started working on this two years ago or two years prior to May? Totally. It's been pretty long. You really got to turn it in early and sit on it and really like plan things out. But it really is worth it in the long run because everything is just sort of thought out. Totally. Are you starting to see any differences in the, the different types of rollouts? Um, I mean, this one is cool this time because I made hella videos, mm-hmm. which was fun. Videos help. I don't know if I want to release music without vi- a visual these days. It just seems like there's such an oversaturation. You might as well just cover all your bases. I know. You kind of like have to. Yeah. For it to stand out, you got to have a visual. Yeah. yeah, totally. Are you playing shows soon? In March and April. Nice. Yeah, tour is in April. Nice. Yeah. Have you you feel like you found a, a good pace, working yeah. pace? Yeah, totally. Finally um back in it. Yeah, company's got a bunch of releases these days. It's churning. It's yeah, awesome. it's cool to see you and Jared and Elijah all finally moving. All of the, all three of these projects have been on the, the back burner or the production line, if you will. Totally. It's been a while. What's new for you, though, outside of the record? You've been woodworking? Yeah, I just built some fancy doors and installed oh, yeah? those. Yeah, that was kind of fun. Doors for the house, apartment? It's for like uh, some people that live at Aaron and Tyler's house. It's like that studio oh, art yeah. co-op zone. Nice. Yeah. But um, that was fun. <laughs> we just put a new door in our place. Oh, I did? And oh, it was cool. way trickier. I mean, I didn't do it, but I did pick it <laughs> off of Craigslist. Oh, nice. <laughs> and even just working with our guy to install it was trickier than I expected. So The front door? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. It's so much work. Oh, my God. It's like a big, heavy chunk of wood that you have to sort of get off the ground by an inch or whatever. <laughs> <It's just> like... Totally. <laughs> <laughs> do you think that you're going to keep the woodworking practice 
going? Totally, yeah. I'm going to take a break for a little bit, but but I'm always going to do it. I got my pile of wood over there. Do you think you'd ever make your own guitar? Oh, I don't know about that. Maybe yeah. I could, but I don't think I want to. You're sticking to furniture. Yeah, I like that kind of stuff better. Yeah. Dude, how's the studio? Studio's going all right. It's in a good place right now. It's like, I'm not like really in between projects or anything. So it's just, it's it's sailing, really. Just looking at it like a boat. And it's like, it's finally up and running. There are a couple of like aesthetic things that could happen, but uh, who we'll see. It's not really public facing, so... Uh-huh. I'm not really motivated to go that hard in that sense, but definitely just trying to maintain like a, a warm, homey vibe. Oh, well, that's great. We got, we got to come by. Yeah, definitely. We literally had rehearsals in it yesterday, so. Oh, nice. Yeah, I just use it for that. Oh, you're doing like some shows for the Caroline tour. Yeah, we're doing shows with Caroline in uh, April in Texas. Sweet. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. We're actually heading out to Phoenix at the end of this month. I think on March 3rd. That's your record release day, right? Yeah, yeah. It's finally happening. But other than that, just trying to stay in shape for these tours. Yeah, I really feel like tour is kind of like a marathon in that sense where it's like you got to just endure, you know? That's true. Yeah, I feel like I'm just now making decisions that could have come sooner but like we're looking at adding like a second audio engineer and oh. stuff like that where we can have a monitor person or like a stage production person stage oh, manager yeah. so like slowly growing i i could have you know gone straight to that 10 person team way sooner but i think i was just a little hesitant cuz uh, like just wanted to make sure it was feasible in like making sure this is all sustainable i remember telling you the first thing is audio so like mm-hmm. Getting your front of house is the number one step, I think. Yeah. For a, a live presentation. Yeah, I'm kind of working on that now. I got a sound guy for some shows, but he just had a baby. Yeah. So <laughs> he can't come on the whole tour, but I think it'll be all right. Yeah. Just looking at like the way we approach live sound, it's just like, well, you're essentially traveling with your own. Yeah, it's every, your own everything. The only thing you're really using is just the room. <laughs> And the speakers yeah. sometimes. I mean, the next level mm-hmm. is like Bonavere level where you're bringing your home, your own speaker system with you everywhere or something. Oh you know? my God. <laughs> I don't know if I would go that far, but yeah. people do it. Mm-hmm. I think about that a lot. Like where, how big can it go? How big is too big? How commercial and accessible is too commercial and too accessible? I don't know if it matters anymore, but looking at what like TikTok is doing to the way like, the way we pair our sonic palette with like our visual palette it's interesting like everything holds water these days like you have american football getting as popular as you know doja cat on tiktok so it's kind of like all of these these sound clips that we're making it doesn't really matter where it goes it's going to get there eventually whether if it's through playing live or, or just going viral on tiktok it's kind of crazy to see how you know, it, yeah. <laughs> there, it's all going in the same direction, no matter if you're trying to make some niche subgenre or pop music, huh. the world will find out about it. Well, like Pharrell always says, too, it's like these are these ideas are, are things that exist in the universe and you're just sort of, un, you know, unveiling them hmm. and showing them to people, things that you've discovered. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, yeah, TikTok is like way quirkier. It's like so random and like it's just kind of like a little like thought or a sound bite or like a humor bite kind of i spent t- way too much time like analyzing um i was going to say something about jared real quick though just like <laughs> his music the way he sort of interpolates different melodies into his songs is very much the thinking of today where it's like the more you can show your influences and wear them on your sleeve the better i feel like that's the only way we can sort of track down authenticity it's just like hmm. what we're our tastes and our references, you know? Interesting. They have to be super, oh, the word almost came to mind. Um, Just accurate, really, Mm -hmm. and intentional. It might look like you're wearing some like normal shirt, but now that shirt's grungy on purpose. Let's keep going on uh, the TikTok analyzing because this is this is a good good topic. Yeah. Because like I do feel like the concept of aesthetics and 
Yeah, Bam Bam hates TikTok. She does? Hates it. She knows. She knows. She knows we're talking about TikTok. It's interesting, though, because like going to TikTok is like, I keep comparing it to going to like some crazy public space. It's like going to a mall or to a movie theater where like this mass consumption of culture is or whatever. So it's like, you can't even really approach TikTok like with trying to have some niche, you know, you're just going to end up at Hot Topic. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know, you're gonna get like the basic version of niche or you're going down some conspiracy wormhole I feel like some things just like sound good and look good on it like what this is just so much with like fairy ears and stuff like i don't know this is just what i watch but you know people like sh- like shooing horses and like shearing sheep and like all this like kind of <laughs> random farm stuff it's like why is this so good on TikTok? And like, I don't know, just some things work, you know, and it's like, okay, cool. Like, when did we ever start thinking about this stuff as like, you know, like kind of like I don't know, random ASMR stuff? No, totally. It's all ASMR too. Like, <laughs> just be watching some like Asian guy cook like some random stuff in China or something. Like, I'll yeah. like watch the craziest videos. Yeah. <laughs> like, why is this on my feed but yeah why is this so fun to watch yeah i'm just like enjoying how voyeur it makes me i'm like what is this genre of of makers <laughs> or craftsmen and yeah, like totally in random country and that kind of makes me think about like listening to music just like going on tour or like something you like feel like you need to listen to something and then I feel like sometimes music gets really tiring sometimes like tv sounds better or just like people talking or something like that it's like it's almost nicer on the ears than like a scripted piece or something it's just like a different kind of music it's not music but it's still like taking up all this space and has its own vibe you know Mm -hmm. with tiktok though there can't be too much post-production and if there is post-production it's it seems like it it does better when it's made with iPhone quality. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> you know, if you use like a fancy camera and then up do some editing and then you upload that, it just seems like people just treat it like an ad. Oh, you know, it, I see. like TikTok for TikTok, it has to be a little bit further removed from this commercial marketing. And it almost has to be a little bit more subtle and like uh just like in the background. Hmm. You're going deep, Chaz. Well, I'm trying to understand this thing because it's... You love TikTok. <laughs> it's worth paying attention to all these different platforms, but just understanding it is is enough. Like, I want to like, like, I understand Facebook. That's why I'm not on it anymore. And I'm just like, eh, don't need to, don't need to be there. It's not really who I feel like talking to. But uh-huh. the TikTok crowd is like, I'm curious because there's like really funny, funny little worlds on there where they critique trends and art and People know what they're talking about. You just got to find it. Mm-hmm. Interesting conversations happening on there. There's this thing on TikTok right now. Everyone's talking about core core. Do you know about? Oh, core-core? I saw that. Yeah, <laughs> it's that's where we are. It's like the most postmodern we can get right now. Dude, yeah, I looked at that for a second. I was like, hmm, what is this? And then I was like, well, I'll figure it out. <laughs> it's honestly lovely. I I feel like this is what art school kids were doing like ten years ago before we had TikTok, but. You know, they're doing their American Beauty filming a trash bag thing years ago. But now we just have a way to really sort of critique it with the right audience. But it's there for those who enjoy it. I enjoy core core. I enjoy this like postmodern sort of lens. It's a good way to sort of um, respond to technology. But I don't know. I think like with Toro especially, that's something I try to play with is the how people would react with technology, with the music and consider like what they're watching on or how they're watching or how long they're watching all those little things are kind of worth paying attention to when it comes to like marketing <laughs> <laughs> oh god marketing oh that's so wrong that i don't want to think about it even though i do i mean it's thinking about you if you don't want to think about it <laughs> <laughs> yeah the machine is like already it knows everything about you so just understanding how to find your community or your tribe within that technology i think is all we can do is like, yes, this is cringe, but this person understands my taste and will support me. Yeah. This talk house, for example, this is pretty cool. I don't think I've ever done something like this where we just 
talk and that's that's it <laughs> we have to talk we just got to keep going okay <laughs> that's fun. here's an idea we get two introverted <laughs> artists to talk to each other <laughs> but oh this is a fun fun convo i didn't think we were going to just talk about tiktok for a long time i mean i'm thinking about like what's fun things to talk shop about and it's like yeah i don't want to talk about anything else really <laughs> <laughs> Uh, except for talking shop on these kinds of things. But yeah, I don't know. That kind of stuff is fun. It is kind of cool. You know what else is cool? What's that? Plants. <laughs> What's that one? <laughs> this is a string of pearls. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's doing pretty good. Here's a African violet. It used to have flowers, but now they're gone. Mm. This one's cute, too. Yeah. No one can see them, but I can see them. I would have more plants but I'm pretty bad at taking care of plants, honestly. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a lot of work. I'm good with outdoor things, just letting them do their thing. I'll, I'll do a cactus or two. Cacti. Oh, yeah. Cacti are awesome, especially um, in the Bay. Dude, that's like a, I feel like that's a trending thing after the pandemic. Everyone got into plants. They're like, we're just home plants. all the time. I got into talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like had to force myself to practice to keep keep talking honestly oh, that's good actually because i got pretty introverted like through the lockdown era phase of the, the pandemic where it's like uh -huh. i was just getting okay doing like press and stuff but then and then i realized like a year into the lockdown i was like oh i really don't like talking it's just this is nice not talking but then uh -huh. i was like when tour started creeping up again and like album rollout stuff i'm like oh yeah i gotta i gotta enjoy talking again I mean, there are fun conversations to be had. Usually they're not in front of the entire world and captured on tape forever. But you gotta do it. No, it's cool. It's fun. No, it's good. It just takes practice. That's all. I was just saying last night to Sam, though, it's just like, it's crazy how when you play a show now, because I was just like, honestly, watching like videos of Caroline Polachek. And then oh, like, cool. I, I wanted to see her new drummer and stuff. And uh -huh. there's Matt. Matt. But like, it's crazy how it's like immediately on the world, on YouTube for the world to see. Like the second yeah. you play something on stage or do something. Uh -huh. So it's different now. I think nowadays kids know what they're getting into, seeing how far and how fast things can go viral. Like, you know what you're getting into when it's like comes to the entertainment industry. But like, yeah, I think a lot of my generation and older got a, an experience that sort of eased into it and eased into this popularity. Oh, uh, yeah. Dude, I feel like I gotta defend the introverts here, though. Yeah, What's like that? I think you can still like make music that's cool and and be popular and like not have to be good at social media. You know, like maybe it's harder, but like I think you can still do it. It's, I think so. Um, like I mean, you do kind of have to be okay at like talking. Like if you're on stage, you can't like just ignore the audience. <laughs> That would be kind of weird. You kind of almost have to beat the audience to the punch of like self-awareness. Maybe it's just me at where I'm at in my career, but like I kind of feel like if we don't warm up to the idea of being influencers sooner than later, you're almost going to just get ostracized in, a, in the sense that like you think you're too cool almost or something. Yeah, I mean, I think, I don't know. What do like Alex G is hella chill. Like, uh, he's, he's a good yeah all over like social media you know no and it's like his music still speaks for itself and it's not like he's not there and he's like mean to people or something i mean i hear what you're saying too but i don't know i think you can also still like take your own path <laughs> sure <laughs> whatever is good for your mental health i think is yeah the approach you should take if you have fun with it that's like ideal you oh know? yeah it's, like you don't need to like just be upset and angry and oh no no, you no. Know, cut yourself off and stuff like that no i think the opposite end of the spectrum of that would be tr a troll <laughs> 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 uh, i think troll behavior as an introvert is annoying it's just like yeah we get it your music is only understood by a certain people but oh no you don't have to be a troll no you don't gotta be mean I think it's it's cool to find your just find your people really because um I think different audiences react to different types of humor so it's if anything is keeping the humor is is key more than being extroverted funny thing you gotta have fun 
Yeah, it's good to to try to consider everyone and everyone that your music is re- reaching. Sometimes um, I forget that my music is reaching the entire world. Sometimes I'm just talking to California or the United States or or, or like to hipsters or just rap fans. You know, it, it's like mm-hmm. there's so many little niches now. So it's like you f- it's just hard to keep up with who is actually listening to what you're saying and, and it, where is it sticking? Hmm. But um, oh, speaking of which, I I love Lil Yachty's new record. Have you heard it? Oh, I haven't. Did I heard about it? He's got amazing taste, and like his raps are phenomenal. Like I really believe in Lil Yachty. Oh, I like him too. So I've been listening to a lot of Kenny Mason too. He's another oh, yeah. forward-thinking, progressive rapper artist. His uh, cadence is very like in the bedroom, in my head, sort of like just talking to yourself kind of like energy Sweet. but yet the the music is very like big arena like turn up music so it's kind of cool to like hear how he brings those two mm-hmm. worlds together oh uh, dude kind of like grungy too yeah there's like some grunge influence that's awesome speaking of humor i'm excited to hear this new uh 100 gex <laughs> did you hear about their uh they just, i think they just announced a new one. Oh, nice i think they're fucking genius they also work with Chris Maggio, photographer I work with often, who is also just um, probably like a visual counterpart to like the way I like to approach music and and, and sort of include this like, or sort of cast a, a net of like hi-fi meets lo-fi or oh, cool. highbrow meets lowbrow. Totally. I just love bands and, and artists and groups that just are able to do their own thing and say fuck you to everyone and still have it be like very commercially successful. Um, it's kind of hard and rare. Usually like, people are, or the content will come off like too, too serious or, or too, too dark or something. There's a lot of people doing like crazy, absurd shit that'll go viral or whatever, but like sometimes it's too polished. Mm-hmm. Um, we talk about this all the time. Like you have to be aware of how or where you're, you're sort of being digested by the the listener. And if they've never heard of you and you have this brand new shiny video, in my opinion, I feel like depending oh, on the it's genre, it's kind of weird. <laughs> depending on the genre of music, like it, it it's gonna either get overlooked or it can hurt it a little bit. But yeah, that kind of makes sense. I have to ease into that kind of stuff. The maximal yeah. approach. Yeah. Did you see that, uh, Pharrell? I like Pharrell. Do you care about Louis Vuitton? Oh, I haven't seen that. No. You see that he's the creative director of Louis Vuitton now. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah, pretty interesting decision, but it makes sense. It's kind of cool that people can kind of like start off in one place and end up anywhere. Like it's all connected. I agree. I think it's something that I think a lot of artists have been pushing and striving for 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 a long time now to actually just like let their creative wings fly, not just their music wings. But I have this theory that like in the future, we'll all be able to like pay for things with like music. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I mean, musicians already do that, but I mean, I think like <laughs> your your everyday person will eventually be able to make something with AI, put it on Bandcamp, put it on YouTube, make some money from it, and then make rent potentially. Who knows? But it's happening. There's ways for it. Uh, things like this for creativity to fully bo- creativity to to really be immersed in everyone's sort of work life. Um, I think it's funny when I see like you know, some kid from working at Baskin Robbins going viral for making ice cream. And then the next thing you know, they're like running the TikTok account for Target or whatever, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that shit's crazy. I think it's really funny how like most of TikTok is ran by young people. Yeah. That's why I'm attracted to it too, is that it's just like, it's where the young, the new, the new ideas are and it's where the young minds and sort of like it can sort of if you can make the jump from Instagram to TikTok, kudos, you know, it's like really fucking hard if you're a millennial, but it's like a shift that eventually is going to have to happen because whatever's after TikTok is going to integrate TikTok. And if you you're just going to be behind. So I don't know. I, I think it's it's fun to explore those things, but it is addicting. I take it off my phone for weeks at a time and then I hop on for weeks at a time. <laughs> Have you thought about integrating TikTok into your rollout? Uh, not really. You might be surprised at the traction. It's crazy. I even just looking at 
the numbers, even even if they're low, they're still higher than TikTok. So it's just like, I guess we're talking to more people here now. But what I enjoy about Instagram and I don't even use Twitter anymore, really. Um, TikTok, I mean, Instagram does seem to build communities a little bit with better. And I guess like in the sense that the content isn't like this seven second video overload or it's not this you know three second or three minute documentary on whatever so like the fact that it's just a still image or whatever you can post moving images and stuff too but i think people go to it for a little bit more substantial things it seems like things local local things i don't really go to tiktok to see what's going on in oakland this weekend that's true yeah it's a nice place to kind of get your information your facts yeah You're like let me see what this person is doing and what they got going on and you can just kind of check in you know mm -hmm. to be able to see what friends are reposting what's going on in whatever city is important ultimately the most important thing is being in one room together with each other or whatever whatever event it is but yeah i think it's interesting with sort of pros and cons to sort of these different platforms but i think about it all the time because i'm like Tumblr was so sweet. I miss Tumblr. Why Why did we go away from the desktop straight to the phone? But oh. Instagram's Tumblr for your phone, I guess. That's true. What was your first social media? Like Facebook, honestly. Facebook? Yeah. I don't know, man. Mine was Friendster. <laughs> I'm a little, uh, I don't know. I'm not big on the social media. I know you have to be, but. Eh, you, you don't know. have to be. I've been doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're totally fine. It, you just got to know where you want to go. You know, I if you're know. trying to go to whatever cap room, then it's not going to be on a tape label. I don't know. Like you have to, if you know what, what size room you want to play, you just got to make stuff for that size room, you know? Yeah. But uh, I don't know. This feels like a good good place to stop. We're going deep. This is what it sounds like when two introverted artists talk. Oh my God. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the TalkHouse podcast, and thanks to Chaz Bear and Hannah Van Loon for chatting. If you liked what you heard, please follow TalkHouse on your favorite podcasting platform and check out all the great written content we've got at TalkHouse.com. This episode was produced by Myron Kaplan, and the TalkHouse theme is composed and performed by The Range. See you next time.